In a picturesque suburban community in Michigan, a seemingly perfect life was shattered by a brutal crime. Tara Lynn Grant, a wife and mother, vanished without a trace. What unfolded in the aftermath would reveal a web of secrets, deceit, and unimaginable violence. As news of Tara's disappearance spread, an intensive search effort was launched. Law enforcement, family, and concerned neighbors rallied together, desperate to find answers and bring Tara back home. Tara was described as a loving and devoted mother, a dedicated professional, and a pillar of her community. But behind closed doors, a darker reality emerged, shedding light on the complexities and struggles within her seemingly idyllic life. Days turned into weeks, and suspicion fell on Tara's husband, Stephen Grant, who would become the center of a gripping investigation. The unraveling of their marriage and the shocking events that followed would shock the community and capture national attention. This is the story of Tara Lynn Grant, a woman whose life was tragically cut short. Tara Lynn Grant was born in Macomb County in rural Michigan in June 1972. She had a sister called Alicia Standerfer, and they both attended public schools. Tara Lynn graduated from Michigan State University, where she earned a bachelor's degree in business administration, marketing. She soon started working for the downtown Detroit office of Washington Group International. Her job required her to travel frequently for business, but she had a rising career at the Boise-based company, which had offices around the world. She married Stephen Grant, also of Macomb County, Michigan, whom she met while studying at the university. The young lovers enjoyed a blissful romantic relationship. Because she loved art, Grant proposed to his girlfriend at the Detroit Institute of Arts. They later tied the knot and they had two young children by 2007, a girl named Lindsay seven years old, and a boy named Ian three years old at the time. Unlike his wife, Grant did not complete his college studies and by 2007 she was the principal wage earner while her husband became a stay-at-home dad and he cared for the children. He occasionally worked at his father's machine shop while Tara began a highly successful and lucrative career at Washington Group International. The household also included Verena Dierkes, a 19-year-old nanny from Germany hired through an agency that assigns foreign young women to work as live-in nannies in American homes. Tara's career was very important to her, but so were her children. She frequently was gone on business during the entire week but home on the weekends with her family. Before leaving on business trips, she would often leave notes for her children to remind them how loved they were. However, Steve frequently expressed dissatisfaction with her travel schedule. He also claimed that she was spending too much time with a co-worker. Stephen once mentioned that he was a better mom than Tara. On the night of Friday, February 9, 2007, Tara returned home from Puerto Rico, where she had been working during the week. Once she got home, she got into a fight with her husband because she had to attend another meeting the following day. Five days later, Tara Lynn had neither returned home nor showed up at work. On the 14th of February, 2007, Valentine's Day, Stephen Grant called the Macomb County Sheriff's Office in the county seat. Mount Clemens, Michigan, to report that his wife, Tara Lynn Grant, had been missing for five days. In his account, Grant said that this was not the first time his 34-year-old wife had left home, which was why he had not immediately reported her missing. He said that on the evening of the 9th of February, he had overheard Tara talking with someone on the phone, saying, I'll meet you at the end of the driveway. He said he saw her get into a dark-colored car that drove off, and that he had not seen or heard from her since. Over the following two weeks, Stephen Grant made numerous media appearances, at times accusing authorities of harassment. The day after reporting Tara missing, Grant was stopped by police and arrested for driving with a suspended license. 
he accused police of using the traffic arrest as an excuse to take him into custody to question him further about Tara's disappearance. The police denied the accusation as they were holding daily press conferences during the search for Tara. According to the detectives, Stephen Grant was very nervous, he was very fidgety, he was trying to be over-cooperative and the more questions he was asked, the more nervous he became. He initially refused to answer questions but agreed to take a polygraph test, if it was administered by someone other than the police. The detectives also became suspicious of the nanny, Verena as they were able to determine that Stephen and Verena started a sexual relationship about four to six weeks before Tara's disappearance. However, Verena was out with friends the night Tara disappeared. They also found some suggestive emails Stephen had sent to one of his ex-girlfriends. However, being resentful of your wife and cheating on your wife is not evidence of any foul play. Initially, the police found no evidence in Grant's home to suggest a struggle, foul play, or any sign of Tara. However, Stephen stopped cooperating with the police although he continued his daily press conferences for the media. The police checked hospitals, morgues, and airports for any indication of Tara's whereabouts. They continued to grow more and more suspicious of Stephen Grant. They searched a wooded area behind Grant's home but again came out empty. The first breakthrough came in the case as someone had found a bag in the park near Grant's home, the same wooded area previously searched by police. The bag contained blood and metal shavings. Stephen Grant worked at a machine shop owned by his father part-time, suggesting that this was enough piece of evidence to secure a search warrant of Grant's house and the machine shop. On the 2nd of March 2007, police executed a search warrant at the home of Stephen and Tara Grant in Washington Township, Michigan. They found a dismembered woman's fully clothed torso and a further search led them to forensic evidence at the machine shop where they found out that the hair, blood, and pieces of flesh stored in a plastic garbage bag in the garage belonged to Tara Grant. They immediately gained an open murder arrest warrant for Stephen Grant, who had already fled the scene. Two days later, after tracking a cell phone call that Stephen made to his sister, Green, police found the suspect 225 miles away in northern Michigan's Wilderness State Park. He had taken liquor and pills from his sister's house, intending to commit suicide. After driving to the park, he spent the night in the cold, with no outer clothing for protection. After being taken into custody, he was airlifted by helicopter to Northern Michigan Hospital in Petoskey for treatment of hypothermia. On the 5th of March during a press conference, Mark Hackle, sheriff of Macomb County, discussed a confession that Grant had made to them in the hospital. He confessed to police in detail about strangling his wife Tara to death on the night of the 9th of February, after an argument in which he had accused her of having an affair with a co-worker. She had returned that day from a business trip to Puerto Rico and she was leaving the next day. Their two children were at home but were asleep in bed. Stephen claimed Tara slapped him at one point, and that is when things escalated. He admits he hit her back and she fell banging her head on the floor. Tara stood up telling Grant that she was going to take the kids and he was going to be homeless and a piece of shit. Stephen claimed at that point he snapped, strangling his wife for approximately four minutes until she died. Grant later dismembered her body at his father's tool and dye shop. USG Babbitt. He took the remains to nearby Stony Creek Metro Park in Shelby Township and disposed of body parts there. But after learning the police planned to search the park, Grant recovered the torso of his wife and hid these remains in black plastic garbage bags in their garage. After being released from the hospital, Grant was transported to Macomb County by a convoy of Macomb County Sheriff's deputies. On the 6th of March 2007, Grant was formally charged with count one homicide, murder in the first degree that is premeditated, 
and with count two disinterment or mutilation of a dead body. The charge of count one homicide in the premeditated first degree is punishable by life in prison. The charge of disinterment, dismemberment, is punishable by up to 10 years in prison or a $5,000 fine or both. On Friday, December 21, 2007, Stephen Grant was found guilty of murder in the second degree. The prosecution sought first-degree murder charges, but after three weeks of testimony, the jury could not come to a unanimous decision concerning the premeditation of the crime. The judge in the case called Stephen Grant's actions demonic, barbaric, and dishonest. Stephen Grant was sentenced to 50 to 80 years in prison for the second-degree murder charge with an additional 6 to 10 years for mutilation of the corpse with sentences to run concurrently. Grant lost his final appeal in state court, leaving intact the original sentence of 50 to 80 years. The Michigan Supreme Court affirmed a lower court decision that found Grant's trial was not unduly prejudiced by pretrial publicity in the widely covered case, nor was Grant improperly denied access to an attorney before confessing to police. In March 2015, U.S. District Court Judge David Lawson denied Grant's petition for writ of habeas corpus. Grant had claimed that police improperly obtained his confession while he was being treated in a hospital for hypothermia and exposure. The judge also denied that pretrial publicity made it impossible for him to receive a fair trial. Lawson said that officials in Macomb County took extraordinary measures to ensure that a fair and impartial jury was seated. The Grant children, just six and four years old when their mother was murdered, were raised by Tara's sister, Alicia Standerfer, and her husband Eric. On the 13th of June, 2008, Stephen's father, William Allen Al Grant, committed suicide in Capac, Michigan, from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He died at Port Huron Hospital. A man who had a neighboring tool shop said that William Grant never seemed to recover from the actions of his son and the destruction of the family. Al Grant had been married three times and widowed twice. He was survived by a married daughter and her husband, in addition to the two Grant children. Tara's story has inspired a collective effort to break the silence surrounding domestic abuse. Communities have come together to create safe spaces, offer resources, and challenge societal norms that enable such violence to persist. The pursuit of justice for Tara led to the conviction of her husband, shedding light on the devastating consequences of domestic violence. It became a pivotal moment in the fight against abuse, signaling that no one should suffer in silence and that perpetrators will be held accountable. As we remember Tara, we honor her memory by working towards a world where no one lives in fear within their own homes. Her story catalyzes change, reminding us of the urgent need for education, support, and intervention to break the cycle of violence. In the end, Tara Lynn Grant's legacy will be one of resilience and hope. May her memory inspire us to stand up against domestic violence, support survivors, and create a future where every individual can live free from fear and harm.